finish there. Hey guys, welcome to the Massive Iron Channel. I'm Steve Sean. This video, in this video, we're going to talk about why hypertrophy benching or benching for the muscle building process is not the same as benching to show your one rep max strength. Before I get into this topic, if you have any questions or comments, drop them down below. The best topic ideas I turn into videos just like this. All right, this is an important video, and those of you that are obsessed with bench press form need to hear this video. There is a, and I'm going to tell you why it matters. There's a lot of information out there about bench press form. And I see, uh, you know, probably 10% of clients that come to me and they're really obsessed with bench press form. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, but we need to understand that there's a difference between hypertrophy benching and benching to show your one rep max. A lot of times I'll see guys that have such a, huge number of form cues or setup cues that they turn the bench into this elaborate complex puzzle when it's not needed. They'll have the super arch, they're focusing on leg drive and every rep, and it's almost like they're trying to test their one rep max on every on every working set, you know, not that they're trying to test their one rep max, but their setup, you know, their leg drive, everything is just over focused and just not needed for for benching for hypertrophy um, when it comes to benching to build muscle basically you only need a few minimal form cues and herein lies the problem uh, to build muscle to build strength the building process i didn't have an elaborate an elaborate 12 step setup plan with with um 52 form cues to set up tightness and leg drive and and proper arch and all that kind of stuff it's not needed and that's the point of the video it's not needed um even for those of you that are strength building you don't need all this setup stuff uh this over complication during your basic training workouts uh, basically all i do is try to dry i set up on my upper back I try to drive my hips towards, I think about driving my hips towards my lats to keep my upper body tight and I make sure my, my feet are planted and what I basically do is just push them on the ground and, and think about spreading my feet. So I try to keep my body tight and what I do from there is after unracking, all I do is think about controlling the weight down and driving it up. Super simple. I don't ever use leg drive. I don't ever worry about, over worry about arch. I try to use a working tightness. Now let's focus on that a little bit. A working tightness, something you can sustain over the course of 8, 10, or even 12 reps. That's kind of the problem with setting up your bench like you're going to do a one rep max with with every possible form cue and and trying to nail your leg drive on every I see I see guys doing this stuff and it's it's actually almost more detrimental they're so obsessed with setting up that it actually is hard to sustain uh, over over the course of a set it's hard to sustain that tightness and consistency and their bench just ends up looking like a mess. Their leg drive is pushing their hips up and, 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 and creating all kinds of chaos. So the real point of this video and why it matters is that when you are training for hypertrophy, when you're training for muscle building, when you're doing your base building for strength, you don't have to overcomplicate the bench. Let, re let me repeat, you don't have to overcomplicate the bench. You need minimum minimum uh, a minimum solid setup and it doesn't have to be like getting under and setting up and doing all the swinging stuff and setting up and leg drive and and all the this crazy circus acts you're not trying to test your one rep max and it's not needed and generally in my opinion it's not going to provide any benefit it's likely just to be more of a distraction than anything so for those of you that are wondering what's the take-home point the take-home point is to simplify your bench setup. The big things I see as a coach when it comes to bench setup is people just have loose legs. Their legs are dancing after they unrack. Um, <clears throat> they don't. They're not controlling the bar going down. Uh, the bar just kind of drops. The bottom drops out of their, uh, you know, in the lower half of the bench, and it's almost bouncing off their chest. Don't over worry about bench setup. Here's here's a simple take-home setup. 
get you get get set up on your upper back like I try to get my weight on my upper back and then I think about driving my my hips towards my lats not excessively so but just with a reasonable degree so I keep a little bit of upper body tightness from there, my feet are planted on the ground, and I think about mild, mildly spreading the floor. I'm not trying to get so tight that it actually makes me loose by rep seven, if you know what I'm saying. So I get the hips towards the lats. I get the feet on the floor, trying to spread the, spread the floor. And the, really the big thing, uh, the big thing from here is control the weight down. If, you're, if the floor is dropping out of your bench the last... Um, two, four, six inches, you're, you're basically losing upper body tightness. So control the weight down. It's not going to make you weaker. It's not, and, and just watch for common things like your feet dancing during reps. You probably don't have any degree of tightness. And for the love of God, guys, don't, don't try to turn, uh, your working sets into such an over complicated 20 form tip setup that it's impossible to sustain. It's This stuff is really not needed uh, for your average everyday training. So guys, hope this video has been of some help. If you have any questions or comments, drop them down below. If you made it this far in this video and have yet to subscribe to my channel, please do. I'd appreciate the support. So guys, as always, thanks for watching. Have a great day.